if I go into the office at 31 and someone shows me a photo of their kid and I still have to fake a smile, <laughs> you know it's not meant for me. <laughs> This is Lady Date, a podcast where we take on unconventional views on societal norms. I'm Carly. And I'm Emily. And back by popular demand, this is episode two. This one's about starting a family. So let's start with the facts on why the norm is meet someone, get married, have kids. So first up is duty. So we learned in episode one about marriage that women throughout history were treated as commodities, pretty much. They're acquired to create children or heirs and employees, basically, for whatever the family business was. So women were basically baby factories yes, they were. is what it kind of comes down to kids often died of diseases back then because there wasn't like vaccines and medicine and things like that so you had to have enough kids to still work the house and the family business work the farm yep next up is everyone's favorite term biological clock we know the fertility changes over the course of your lifetime the term biological clock refers to the fact that it's generally harder to get pregnant later in life. Yeah. There is considerable scientific evidence that the number and the quality of both eggs and sperm decline as you age. However, times they are changing. Yes. So millennials, which are people born between 1981 and 1996, which is us, hey, are having kids less often than our parents. So they're kind of like the baby boomers, right? Our parents, mm -hmm. yes. technically. Um, so the number of babies born in the U.S. in 2018 was the lowest in 32 years. I don't know if maybe they just didn't update it, but it would be interesting to see um, with coronavirus, like how that is nothing is maybe. Else to do yeah, the baby. maybe we're having a spike. Like the baby boomers was the <laughs> spike after like World War II. Um, so according to a recent article published in The Guardian that we found, this is super interesting too, Gen Z, which is the generation below us, millennials, they're the TikTokers. Um, th these are kids that are in like their 20s right now. Um, they're also reluctant to have children. So it's not just us. Um, the article cited that they wanted to be able to retire early, which is interesting that they're thinking so much further into the future. And they also don't want to contribute to the already pressing issue of overpopulation. There's just too many people. Yeah, it's smart. Why add more? So let's get into our take on what we think of societal norms and starting a family. Me, I don't understand the like pressure and deadlines that women put upon themselves that if I'm not married with child by 25, I'm a failure. Right. I was, I'm still trying to figure out where the next step in my career is. Like, you know, you meet some some ladies, some lady friends that are like, oh, you know, I was in college and I decided that I'm going to work for two years and then become a stay-at-home mom. Right. I was, listen, I came out of college and I was like, okay, where do I see myself in 10 years? I want to live in three different cities within my career. Right. Didn't happen yet. Well, <laughs> we're extending the 10 years. <laughs> we were also working like a minimum wage job out of college yeah. the same minimum wage job which is where we met and became lady friends but i don't see at, like how at that point like we also were in like a t very tough competitive field yeah. that like doesn't pay you any money but like if people were in like a more stable career or something and they were like oh i can financially like afford kids or whatever Maybe that would make sense, but I think we're coming at it at a perspective that is like so different than most people. Yeah. Because it was like we, you know, we didn't have that money. We didn't have that forty thousand no. dollars job. No, right no, we didn't have like an entry level like big girl job. We, I we mean, we, we tried, did. but it was different than we were expecting, <laughs> which is kind of funny to look back on. Terrifying. But yes, um, but I think that a lot of women still still kind of feel that way like in our age group which is so surprising because yes. i feel like oh we're, we're so like advanced and like we don't do that anymore uh but I, there's definitely girls that are our age that definitely still feel like oh i have to be you know married at 25 and have kids by 30 or like two kids by 30 and i have to be in a house and it's like all these things that you have to do and it's like you actually don't. You don't. You sure don't. Um, so that's kind of why I think that's the biggest reason why we don't we don't get the whole kids thing because it's like 
don't you want to pursue your career and like be financially stable within your own self? If I need a roommate to have a two bedroom or if I can afford like a studio. Right. Well, How I, am I going to bring a child into that that I don't, doesn't have four legs? I don't do – well, right. <laughs> I don't do studios because I don't want to sleep in the kitchen. You can, like, be creative. <laughs> you got to use those, like, folding walls and make rooms out of your studio. Just hang sheets up, yeah. you know. <laughs> it just starts looking like a, a crack house real quick. I was thinking, like – Gypsy, but we can oh, go crack. Oh, crack. We can well, go we're crack. very close to Atlantic City. Yeah. It's just, you know. But it's yeah, but like warm. you said, it's like, how are you going to have like a baby in like a small place? Like, I think of like New York City, like these apartments are so tiny. So it's like, do you have a million roommates and a baby? Mm-hmm. Like, how does that even work? So. And then if you still <sighs> want to pursue your career. Right. Child care. That pretty much you have a child sure. and then it immediately goes to somebody else because they're going to be raising it so you can go to work. Well, child care is also extremely expensive. Sure is. So, and a lot of jobs, like, don't give you a lot of time mm-hmm. off as far as, like, maternity leave. And a lot of places, I think, are coming around to paternity leave, to right? paternity, yeah, yeah. definitely. But, like, maternity still caps out at, like, what, 12 weeks? If yeah, that, yeah. Where America is the lowest in pro- one of the lower countries in the world that yeah. get that. Like, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. Scandinavian countries give like a year. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then it's like you would maybe feel more comfortable giving your kid to like a daycare type mm-hmm. scenario. You but had that bonding time, but now yeah. it's like, oh, you just gave birth. Well, you can still come in for that four o'clock meeting, right? Right. And you're sure, kind of expected Karen. to do that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just, I maybe we're selfish. I don't know if that's like a bad thing, but like being selfish has that stigma of being negative. But I just feel like we're both really passionate about our careers and we like went to college to kind of pursue like specific things. So we're not going to just give that up. And not that I feel this way, obviously, because I don't want to to have the child. Right. But there's a lot of women that once they become pregnant in a career, they feel that when they go out on the maternity leave, Someone else is going to step in their role, yeah. and do a better job, and be replaced. Right. So you already have that weird competition for not job security just for bringing life into this world. Right. Which is supposed to be a miracle. It is. Well, it is. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like that that pressure is, like, not um, addressed. Yeah, it's not. And, and, like, I don't know if a lot of people really think about that, but I, I also feel like we're not – gonna put ourselves in that position no, either I mean, you know if i go into the office at 31 and someone shows me a photo of their kid and i still have to fake a smile <laughs> you know it's not meant for me <laughs> well i think that's really interesting because um we both never wanted to have no. kids it wasn't like uh, like i know a lot of people oh, mostly you will, you will, will yes and i feel like that's very insulting when it people is. say stuff like that and maybe it's because they don't know how old we are, mm-hmm. but it's like, uh, we're both 31. Like we're, we're too old to like not know, you know? Yeah. So uh, we're set, we've been set. I never wanted to have kids. I think I told my parents when I was eight, like I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm over this never, already. I don't like them. No, I, like, I just hate other kids. Yeah. I've always been an old lady. So I just like have just not like no patience for like little kids and stuff. But it's just, like, wasn't anything that I ever wanted to be a part of. But I feel like a lot of my guy friends maybe, like, thought about having kids when they were younger. And then now, when they're kind of more grown up, they're like, nah. Yeah, I could definitely see that. But, I like, I agree with you. I've never had that maternal instinct where, no. like, you see a baby and you cry or something no. like that. No, or, or like, like, what is that? Like, baby fever? Like, no. if, you, if, like, all your friends are having kids, you're like, oh, I want a baby. Like, I've literally never said that. I was like, good luck good luck I don't I don't want to be a part of it like I just don't yeah I think it's maybe the maternal instinct and that biological clock that we were thinking about like we're I guess approaching that like what is it's like 35 36 or something where it ends up being like a geriatric pregnancy where you could have more complications and stuff it's a lot harder to get pregnant but I feel like once you kind of get closer to that you're like oh I need to get pregnant yeah I don't have that Mm -mm. no I'm like can I get another cat yeah (laughs) I will take one turtle, please. I would rather have a little turtle. Can I get a dog? Yeah, just keep adding, like, little fur babies or something. I don't know. I guess maybe ours are broken. We didn't get that. Our clocks are broken. 
ours were just never to Yeah, be I don't know. We we got born without it. You know when you go to the uh, Build-A-Bear and you put a little heart in there? No. Oh, my gosh. In the Build-A-Bear factory? Build so Bear. I haven't either because I wasn't allowed to do well, anything. how do you know? I've heard from my friends that, like, we're allowed to go to birthday parties at Build-A-Bear. And they, and they basically, like, you, you make the bear and, like, the little stuffing goes in. And then you get to put the heart in. It's like a little felt heart. And you put it in. Well, whoever made us we did not put the little clock in there. And they were like, these two. What's the purpose of the heart? It's because you gave your bear a heart. Oh, That's another episode. Hates it. <laughs> Hates it. That's another episode. Hates all cute things. Um, well, I except like, your cats. Your cats I are cute. I like anim- baby animals. Yeah. Just not stuffed animals. No. That's, that's fair. No. Um, yeah, I don't know, I guess. I mean, that's fine. Maybe, like, we were talking about the overpopulation a little bit. Like, every time I talk to my one friend that has seven kids, I'm like, you covered me. Thank you. As far as, like, keeping the old human race going, it's like, you got it. And, like, I don't know. Maybe because I come from a news background, Mm -hmm. I know a lot about the world and what's going on. Sure, sure, yeah. I still study it. I don't want to bring somebody into this right well, now. So that was going to be one of my questions in our interview. Coming because, up. yeah, because I know, like, a lot of our friends that have had kids recently are, like, having kids in this this world. Like, not corona. Um, no. But very close to the beginning of corona. And... Yeah, I don't know if that was, like, a factor in, like, we should start trying to have kids or if it was, like, a surprise. Because sometimes you you aren't planning it, yeah. you know? And you're like, it's okay if we get pregnant. Right. Like, I have a, a friend couple that are were like, we're just going to go off birth control. But, like, they're married and they're yeah. like, we're just going to see if yeah. it happens. Um, but, I mean, the world's not getting any better. So it's just interesting because, like, I feel like we're coming at it from a very, like, logical standpoint. Like, oh, my gosh, if you read the news, ah, it's a scary place, which it is. But I think other people come at it at, like, but it's, it's our – can make it better. It's a combination of the both of us. Like, we don't come at it from, like, the cute <laughs> – No. We come at it from the cynical, like – logical thing and like a lot of people don't think like that yes well especially corona i feel like that made it worse for me like as far as hearing my friends like are are pregnant or had kids or whatever during corona i was like okay but like do you want them to get sick i don't know or like my one friend like her husband like couldn't leave the hospital like, once you were in the hospital yeah, for, like, you labor, yeah. mm-hmm. you, like, couldn't leave. So it's just, like, stuff like that. Or, like, you have to go to all your OBGYN appointments yourself. Yeah, like my you, friend you did, can't. her husband couldn't go yeah. anything with her. It's like, uh, and I realize a lot of a lot of the times it's probably a surprise, so you're not, like, planning for it. But uh, my, All mine that have the children have planned for it. So. Yeah, I mean, sure. I don't, whatever makes sense to you. Whatever makes you happy. I don't know. But, yeah, I think we're, we're, we tend to be very logical, not just about this, about, like, everything in our life. So we're like, but the world is scary. So, and even, like, the economy is kind of, I mean, it's good now. Like, the stock the stock market's, like, way up or whatever. In this economy? Yeah, well, right. But, but you never know when it's going to crash. Like, when we were in college and we graduated during the, the recession. Yeah. And it was really tough to get jobs. And that's definitely a millennial. It's, I mean, you read anything. That's like the millennials' fear. Yeah. It's like, we grew up during this, so we kind of know the good, the bad, the ugly. Like, we came in right on the cusp of, like, the digital generation, so we still yeah. remember our phone being plugged into the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we were the ones that had hope for the future and then watched it burn in front of us. Well, that's <laughs> in so many words. <laughs> Why I would not want to bring a child into the world is because we watched the world burn in front of us. And then we've, I mean, I've continued to work multiple, like, uh, minimum wage jobs with a college degree, graduating from an honors college. So I I don't have a lot of hope. I did secure my... After we departed. We did depart from our minimum wage job after college, yes. I, I did go on to the to the salary roll. You did! <laughs> I did. It took me very long to get there. And then they were like, guess what? This Goodbye. company is downsizing, so thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Um, but still, it's not... 
you know, it's not boomer and older where it's like, oh, you have a salary now, you can buy a house, you can do this, you right? Can do that. And I, well, we don't want to really I, do that either. I have a salary and I still can't afford it, the things I want to do. Right. Well, not yet, even, right? Maybe ever. Well, possibly ever. We did choose some weird <laughs> we did some things weird. in life. But, um, but yeah, I guess maybe I, I know a lot of people also say, like, you'll never be financially stable to have a kid. So it's like you just you just do it and, like, that make it work. That doesn't make any sense to me. But that would give me so much anxiety. I know. Like, like <laughs> I can barely afford to live and it's just me. You know, like, yeah, like I can't, I can't imagine like having another whole ass person to like buy a whole bunch of stuff for. As a former and current mom of the group, like, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Friend mom. We got the friend mom. Friend group. Yeah. yeah. It's always the mom. Yeah. Yep. That was me. Yeah. From like. I could see that. Age seven on. Seven. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I was like, stop, stop, you know, sharpening your pencil too far. You'll poke something. Sure. Actually, I could see you cracking the whip in, like, second grade. Well, I could definitely see you doing that. I didn't that. get to the whip until older <laughs> in age, but, <laughs> you know, second grade's a little younger what? than that. <laughs> but, yeah, I was always the mom. I quit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, back to that. You were I always the mom. I was always the mom of yeah. the friend group. So, sure, it's sure. like, I feel like I, that was 18, more, yeah, that was over 18 years, so I did my time. You did your time with your I friends. I was the responsible yep. friend. I remember this one time. You know, you're in high school. My friend told his parents that I was going to be at a party. So mm-hmm. that was the only reason why he was allowed to go. Oh, yeah. I was not at the party. <laughs> <gasps> Perfect. But the yeah. parents were like, oh, Emily's going to be there. Yeah, you can go. Right, exactly. It's like, Emily's going to take care of everybody. Great. It's basically like a chaperone. And then he got his stomach pumps because Emily was not You know there. what? <laughs> Let that be a lesson. Uh... I feel like that makes a lot of sense, though. Why not I'm that, really 80? No, well, yeah, I think we both are. We're both, like, old ladies. Mm-hmm. I would say, actually, old men. <laughs> not even ladies. Old men. We're very crotchety. Yeah, but I'm, like, you know? the old lady in her rocker that, like, will scream inappropriate things. Like, sure, sure, I sure. told her former boss that that was what I aspired to be. <laughs> you know the old ladies on the porch? That's me. Yeah, but, like, that will <laughs> shout, like... Look at those legs go! Like, sure. you know? Like it. Oh, like catcalling? Yeah. Catcalling, like, young dudes? Yes. Oh, okay. Like the male. Like the, oh, the mailman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or something? Yeah. Well, that's, a real, that's a real picture. The rocker, catcalling people. Great. But that's also kind of, your, like, your temperament now. I don't catcall people. In a way. People. I wish you would. <laughs> um, I, uh, I also feel like... Another reason you, why I'm not having children inappropriate oh inappropriate model. just no filter <laughs> can't be out here watching paul patrol screaming obscenities oh god right probably not another reason i can't do the children's shows well, i did not watch barney growing up it annoyed me i didn't watch I, sesame street i did watch barney it was annoying it was trippy that was the tall tubbies that. those things oh that yeah the teletubbies were like on acid i didn't like any like i did not watch i did not like the kids shows sure as a child right well i'm not gonna like it as a 40 year old i feel like that could be um kind of a springboard into like i don't want to have to move to like a house in a school district that has to you know like you have to like kind of think about that like oh this is a good school for my kid you gotta like make sure they're involved in the in sports, you have to do kind of like planning all of that and make sure that they go to practice and I don't know. Unless they don't want to do it. Well, right. But it's like you kind of want your kid to have like friends and like make, like be in friends friends? (laughs) or like music or something. Like (laughs) if they're in, if they're involved in the school, like you have to kind of be a part of that. You have to go to like concerts and yeah, right. So like you're signing up to do that and some people are like really excited and soccer moms right and you're like this is so much fun i love hanging out with my kids and my you know everybody's parents and stuff whatever but like that's not something that i ever like thought was like a super good time like i (laughs) like i really liked doing sports and stuff but i was never like wow my parents are having a really good time you know like something like that so i feel like i would not want to you're signing up for a life with all those activities that is now part of your life and i'm like i want to move to la i want to move to you know, New York City, like, I want to... Oh, you are going to say Italy, and I was oh, like, no. take me with you. Oh, yeah, fine, yeah, sure. Yes. I want to go to Italy, like, I, you know, you can up and go on vacation whenever you want. Well, like, that's the thing, there are, 
women that have the mentality like once I become a mom, yeah, my child's life is now my life. Right. And I think that's I what don't you have that. That's what you should be signing up for yes. if you're a good parent, right? But like, yeah, I think we're just in a different place where like we don't want that. No. And I feel like there's other people like us, but it's it's maybe hard to tell people that because it's it is pretty unconventional. Because as soon as you say, you know what, I really want to focus on a career. Yeah. You know, I want to focus on a partner if I have a partner. Mm-hmm. And it's just like me and my husband kind of thing. Yeah. You know, you still get the people like, oh, you know, once you've been married for a while, you're really going to want them. Nah. No. Mm-mm. Because people, like, you get instantly shamed. It does feel like that sometimes. Or like, yeah, like judged kind of. Or people just so shocked. Yeah. But it's like... I don't know if it's, like, a bravery thing or, like, we just had the courage to pursue, pursue what we went to college for or, like, something career-wise. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, maybe people best. that are still kind of hung up on that whole deadline thing that yeah. it's, like, oh, I got swept up in the deadline, so I'm And, kind like, of... I don't know how my girlfriends do it with a career and a family. Well, it's probably really hard. It is it's hard. It's probably really, really hard. Yeah, but you you can choose not to do that, <laughs> which is what <laughs> we, we're doing and a lot of people yeah. probably do do but it's like we're in the minority i think yeah i do even still my sleep and my spare time and my money Mm -hmm. oh and also birth control is (laughs) free thanks obama (laughs) and there's variety there's a variety you you can get you can get a whole bunch of different kinds there's so many great medical advancements now it's you know what it's a weird time and a scary time but at least it's like medicine wise i feel like i I feel like we're we're doing pretty good medicine wise i'll take that yeah for sure yeah All right, so to help me and Emily out with this episode, I'm calling in one of my oldest friends, which we just figured out. This is my friend Jess from college, and we met in 2007, which means we've been friends for 14 years, aka we're really old. Um, (laughs) But um, yeah, so Jess has an amazing family. And she married one of my other friends from college. We're in like a little track and cross country group. And that's where they met. And they've been married for a long time. So I feel like if there's anybody that can help us with this, it's Jess. (laughs) Hello, everybody. Hey. So Jess, um, we wanted to ask you what your thoughts are or were on starting a family. Like, is it something that you always pictured for yourself or like you always wanted to do or did you have like some kind of plan where you were like when I get to this age I want to have this in my life or like basically yeah just kind of take us through your thought process on starting a family um so starting a family um I knew because of health conditions that it may not be possible um we didn't know that I didn't know that until like college um so when I got married, it's kind of like when you're dating, it's like the end goal usually is marriage, right? And like, you feel like society feels like, okay, once you're in marriage, you have to have kids. And so it was kind of like, I knew it wasn't always possible for me to have kids, but then it was like, you had to have a conversation with someone else at some point, you know, once it got serious about, hey, like, it may not happen for us, you know? So that was kind of the first Step was like recognizing it for myself and then being able to have a conversation with my fiance or you know when things are getting serious like I would love kids but this may not happen um so I think from the beginning from like that point on it kind of was like I was open to it not happening I guess because there were going to be obstacles in our way it wasn't guaranteed like it is for some people like after that point like I had always kind of seen myself with kids but I didn't really know what was going to happen does that make sense yeah so I guess not to put it too bluntly but for coming from two people that has never seen themselves with kids I guess our biggest question is what's that like (laughs) To be like, yeah, is, to, to have always seen yourself with kids. And then to, like, realize that, like, maybe it wasn't going to happen. Or, yeah. You can yeah. Um, it was kind of devastating because you kind of feel like, is 
someone going to love me still? You know, like, is someone going to break up with me because I, not that I'm choosing to not have kids, but like, because it could be harder to have kids, you know, like, Mm -hmm. is someone still going to want to be in a relationship with me? Will they still take our relationship seriously? Um, I definitely feel like there were some concerns about just how was a guy going to perceive that? Like, what were their intentions? Like, did they always see themselves with kids? Like, what was their opinion on becoming a father or even like being around nieces and nephews? Like how would that impact them as well as how is it going to impact me myself? So, yeah, it was definitely a struggle. So knowing all of that and like, I mean, of course you ended up telling Josh that at some point. Um, <laughs> and then, so how did he react? And then when you found out that you could have kids, like obviously you, have your son so like what was that like um so like the decision to start having kids like Mm -hmm. or what okay so we just we the way that fertility treatments and things work is you have to try for a year and fail for a year in order for insurance to cover anything or really even for a physician to evaluate you and see um what kind of interventions can be put in place and so um we were in the middle of grad school actually and we're like okay let's start trying like we have a year left in grad school like by the time we graduate we'll probably be in that phase where we're looking at fertility treatments um and literally in the middle of grad school i got pregnant so that (laughs) was kind of crazy like not you know crazy in a good way like you didn't expect it and it was like a happy a happy surprise Of course. Yeah. I don't know. Did you have to plan for things differently knowing that you were going to have this whole other like life, even though like you were maybe accepting that you were not going to have kids like because of a medical thing? Like, yeah, your mindset kind of changes. Um, because like by that point you're like in a career, like you obviously have, like when we would get together, it would be like, okay, like, are you guys okay if I, like, bring the baby? Because, like, we're both coming, you know? Like, it would, you definitely kind of had to shift your schedule and your priorities. Um, You can't just, like, go get your nails done whenever you want, you know? Like, you kind of have to, like, make sure everything is good with the baby before you leave. Um, Or that, like, there's a sitter or daycare or whatever. Um, And just, like, your relationship changes, too. Like, I, like, since we've had our child, um, I think, we, and he's three and a half, he'll be four in the fall. Um, we've been literally on three dates by ourselves. Like, so oh my God. Home. Because he goes everywhere with it. Like, when we get together, like, we all mm-hmm. have our kids to, you know what I mean? Um, so, like, yeah, we, we've literally, I think, had three dates in four years. Oh my God, that's crazy. So, yeah, like, your personal life changes, your career definitely changes because um, you don't know, like, you can't the four kids right you could plan oh I'm gonna have like a long weekend because I'm doing x y or z or oh you know I don't feel that I'm gonna take off but then like you have a child like especially when they're little and they can't communicate with you you don't know that they're sick until you get a call from daycare and then it's like oh just kidding gotta like peace out sorry guys you know so like that can be kind of or like they they wake up in the middle of the night throwing up and and you have to adjust really quickly to their needs but then there's also like your career in the balance too like you can't just not do your job too so a lot of your life changes once you have kids from like the personal end um I feel like your relationship with your partner your career and then you're just you also like there's like a whole other like dimension to yourself in motherhood that you're like figuring yourself out like who you are as a mother and like what your opinions are in terms of like hot topics like vaccines or like how to dress your child or what chemicals you want them exposed to like all these different um you know hot topic items you have to kind of figure out for yourself how you feel about that and then how you and your partner feel about that together can be a lot of um a lot of decisions and you never really know if you're doing it right right like right 
they don't come with an instruction manual, unfortunately. You know, <laughs> he's a good child. <laughs> but I yeah. feel like, in a way, like if you are someone that that wanted kids, does that mean that you're kind of like up for all of those kind of variables, like maybe having to duck out of you know, plans that you had or, or like work or things like that. It's like, sign me up for all that stuff because I want this kid. Yeah. I, I feel like I was more open to having the changes mm -hmm. with having to like duck out and things like that. But I also think like what I thought parenthood would be like compared to what it is like is very different. You know, like it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, I'll wake up in the middle of the night to pump and nurse. But then, like, until you actually have to do that every two or three hours for like weeks on end, it's like a oh. completely different mindset. You know, you're like, I'm just ready for eight hours of sleep again. Like, please. <laughs> oh my God. I can't even imagine. Um, that all sounds very, very difficult. And like you said, it, it doesn't come with the instruction manual. Um, and it's also sounds a lot different than the Sims, which is my only, uh, <laughs> experience with children. Yeah. <laughs> or even like the little giga pets that we used to have on our like key chains and stuff. And we used to like, yes! them and, like it is so different than that. <laughs> oh my God. I can't even imagine, but I mean, Jess, I've met your son and been in his company and what a lovely little kid. And, you know, me and Emily aren't like really kid people I would say but like man I don't know if it's just our group of friends like everybody's kids are just real sweet and like are nice in groups and like so yeah so you I mean you and Josh are crushing it even though there's no manual you're figuring it out so <laughs> I wow <don't> know. <laughs> I feel like that definitely helps us I mean Emily and I you know are just out here trying to like understand the whole like the wanting to have kids and like thinking about a family and and different things so I feel like that definitely helps good yeah yeah thanks so much for uh for talking with us it's always so great to see you I know like we don't get to see each other as much as we would like but yeah yes that is so true we wish we could see each other more but that's part of yeah. getting older right. it is <laughs> oh, there's like eight eight of us in a group so it's like tough to get everybody's like schedules and uh pretty much everybody in our group has kids except for me and our friend Andy. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah so I mean it does that's like a whole other it's part of it too the whole social part of it but yeah I don't know it's so great talking to you and thank you so much for for helping us out absolutely thanks for asking me I think we did a good job <laughs> oh my god you did yes Okay. All right. All right. So, you later, Carly. All right. Thanks, Jess. Just heard from Jess and her reasons to start a family. I respect her so much for that. You know, she kind of touched on what we were discussing earlier in the podcast about how, you know, society puts that pressure on women that, you know, once they get married, it's time for children. And while she may have had some health issues in addition, you know, her biological clock was indeed ticking to get it started. And, uh, you know, I totally understand where females come from, saying that this is what they want. I don't know about me. Carly, Jess changed your mind? I don't think Jess changed my mind, but I think she definitely helped, like, shed some light on that mindset. Like, why most women, like, think about having kids and having a family. And Like, I, I get it, but I also feel like our side is, like, really where I'm at. <laughs> I'm still gonna go with, you know, not having children unless they're fur babies. I'll stick with them. Good with that. Yeah, I think I'll stick with my turtle. Oh. I think I think him and me are good roommates, you know? Three dogs. What do I want? I want three cats, two dogs, and a rabbit. A rabbit? Emily just wants a zoo. Who needs kids when you got a zoo? Hey, listen, I'll take a cow. <laughs> Some goats. Just send them. I mean, we just need a farm. I do. Uh, but, like, I need, like, a movable farm, farm, and that's just not a thing. Yes. Well, we can work on that. But I think we did it. Yeah. I think we did it. Episode two, 
we dive into why people have kids. We gave you our kind of weird spiel on it. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. We got episode three in the works. So TBD. yeah, TBD. I think it's yeah, gonna be a fun so one. Many topics that we have opinions on. We just gotta, you know, pick one. Yeah, I think we gotta narrow it down. I'm excited though. I uh, always love our chats. Always love our lady dates. This is the Lady Date Podcast. Bye, bitches. Ah.